All right, thank you all for coming. Um, we're going to be talking today about the challenges and learnings of implementing wallet connection on mobile apps. So first off, my name is Brian Moreno, and I'm a full stack developer at Shopify. Um, I come from Belo Horizonte, Brazil, but now I'm based in Berlin, Germany. And I'm Carolina, but I prefer people call me Caro, actually. And I'm from here, from Bogota. Uh, I currently live in Canada, in Vancouver. And yeah, I've been a front-end developer at Shopify for the past uh, two years. And Shopify, I don't know if you know, but it's number one e-commerce platform for all business. So whether you want to start or grow your own business, this is a place that you can do it. And more specifically, in Shopify, we worked at this uh, product called GM Shop. Exactly. So what is GM Shop? Well, GM Shop is our take on token-gated commerce on a mobile, mobile platform. So the premise is, what if we could unite brands with their most loyal fans and granting those fans access to exclusive products like gated by the NFTs they already own? And to build such a product, the first thing we need to do is to let the users connect their wallets and to know which NFTs they, are, they own, right? So our constraints were to build proof of ownership in as few steps as possible in the most seamless way, like the best UX experience as possible. And that's what we set out to do. That's what we learned. Yeah, so we're going to share a little bit like our journey that we did. The first thing that we did, uh, we wanted to do an MVP uh, just to prove that like this could be done and that we could, could connect our wallet. And we focus on MetaMask and Rainbow. And we did like uh, we started using Wallet Connect. I don't know if you have heard of it, but uh, the React Dab, which is like a out of the box uh, application that you can install and use. And yes, this works for the MVP, but we started seeing that it was like really flaky. We didn't have the robustness that we needed. Uh, and we started like, okay, let's try different things. The next thing that we did was for MetaMask specifically, uh, we looked into deep linking uh, connection. And we actually found like really good results, especially on iOS. This was what like the, the protocol that we used. And yes, also it also waited for Coinbase Wallet. Although this did improve our results, well, it was still not enough. It was still not done. So we were not seeing the success rate we wanted. We wanted a more robust solution. And we still had like failures for no apparent reasons because we needed to replace the connection with another one sometimes when the user didn't have the right NFT. And that was failing sometimes. So our hypothesis is because like the React um, library of Wallet Connect was kind of closed, like out of the box was closed. So we assumed that they um, set a persistent connection and that was getting in our way. So what we did to fix that was actually, I'm going to get to that in a second, but just to remember, we needed proof of ownership in as few steps as possible, right? So we could just get the connection, a signature and drop the session because the backend could do the rest of the checks, like whether the user had the right NFT or not and that sort of thing. The client could, could, could just drop the connection. So what we did to fix that, well, we, rewrote our wallet connector code. This is a screenshot of the PR that, that done that. And yeah, we got rid of this out of the box library and we use Wallet Connect's core package to rebuild our wallet connection code and focus on this one time connection that we could just easily replace or drop if we didn't need it. And well, the results were pretty good. Um, our user feedback improved, the internal feedback improved, and the numbers were significantly better. You can see a screenshot of it. This was the version we shipped to our users. But uh, you're going to notice this also has Ledger Live besides MetaMask Wallet, uh, Rainbow, and Coinbase Wallet. Yeah, so like an uh, important feedback that we got from the user was that we didn't have hardware wallet support. We have only talked about software wallets. And it was really important because we, ha we, we don't want our users to, we want our users to connect like wallets that have um, valuable tokens, but we don't want them to, to move their tokens to a software wallet to connect to our application. And it's also a bad practice that like we want to encourage good practice. 
Uh, so we try, what we tried doing was uh, introducing Ledger Live through Wallet Connect. And yes, this sort of did the trick, but it was really flaky, to be honest. Like, and when it failed, we didn't really know what was happening. Like, our only support that we could give it was, OK, just restart everything and try it again. Uh, so yeah, we didn't nail this part. And even though we did implement support for Ledger wallets, well, guess what? It was still not enough. I mean, for some users, like some users asked for support for even more hardware wallets because they had extra security concerns, especially about Ledger. Um, so a portion of our users asked for this. And it's kind of hard to solve because, because not all of those hardware wallets have mobile support. So what could we do in this case? Well, Wallet Connect on the desktop is actually built as a first-class citizen. It, it works. So um, for these wallets, we could just let the user connect via the desktop and propagate that connection back to the app. Um, however, that creates many challenges, especially UX-wise, because you need to get this experience right. You're cre creating extra friction, right? So take this. Um, advice, so to say, with a grain of salt. And this is something we haven't implemented yet. We were still in, in progress of doing this. Yeah, so there's still a long way to go with the wallet connection. Uh, so this is like a little bit of the summary of what we have right now working, uh, like the literal, also the different uh, implementations that we have. As you can see, like it changes from platform and also from uh, wallet. Uh, and like we do want to uh, focus or like make clear that we worked on this for one year, and we understand that we, we like our requirements were to have a really robust wallet connection, but that's not the case for everyone. Like maybe you just need an MVP that uh, you can connect uh, like a wallet, MetaMask, and that's it. So it just depends on like the team that you have, the time that you have, and uh, what you need uh, for your application. So yeah, the solutions can change. Um, yes, and I don't know, something that um, made me think about all these uh, mobile and Web3 uh, gap that we have is that I have been working on Web3 for almost five years, and honestly, this was the first time that I worked on mobile during that time. And that shows us that, like, yes, as, as Brian said, uh, Web3 is, uh, is desktop first, basically. But in order for us to reach the gap, we need to make it mobile first. Especially like us as developers, we do have the power, I guess, to shape the industry because what we build is what people will actually use. So the only way to bridge in this gap is uh, for us to uh, like focus in on mobile and trying to make those tools better because we shape our tools and therefore our, our tools shape us. And yeah, also like a lot of people don't have easy access to desktop. They and the, the access to mobile is way more accessible. Uh, so yeah, I would say uh, in order for us to bring Web3 to an Ethereum to uh, billions, we need to make it accessible. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much. And <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, just a quick parenthesis, um, we're still doing research around the topic, so we got a Gitcoin bounty up for grabs um, around air, air gap verification uh, around assets, so please check it out, and if you're interested in helping us out, like it would be great. Yeah, thank you so much.